Okay, hi everybody. Um, as you know, I'm Ashley. Uh, just want to recap on the sponsors. I worked really hard to sort out uh, as many sponsors as possible. Uh, RSA Web have uh, really done a great job of sorting the wireless, and we appreciate that. Uh, my company is the organizing company. Uh, Memeburn are a media partner, and they're doing blogging. Uh, Imod's also here, and he's going to be doing some media stuff. Platinum, we've got Missing Link, uh, Friends of Design, and Old Mutual. And then our gold sponsors, Woo Themes, Obox, Jetpack, The Forge, and actually the Z Duo as well. Uh, apologies, uh, they're actually a gold. Um, so, yeah, we've got lots of theme prizes. We're going to be raffling them uh, through the day. You might get an email, so check your inboxes. Uh, we're also doing some competitions, so if you look at the sites, uh, WordCamp Cape Town 2011.wordpress.com. Go comment on the sessions, uh, ask questions. You're eligible to win prizes. So, what am I talking about? Uh, deployment servers and scaling. Uh, a Feed My Media case study. There are my details uh, at Feed My Media on Twitter, my email address, and my website. Uh, so yeah, an overview. I'm just going to take you through a bit of background. Um, humble hosting beginnings. What is Feed My Media? Dev versus live servers. The setup, uh, the future, and Q&A. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've been focused, uh, my company's been focused on WordPress since 2007. Uh, we used to do IT support for our SINs. Um, we no longer do that. And we focus entirely on WordPress development. Uh, I had a lot of experience with Linux servers, although due to running a business, I ended up moving out of that space. But it definitely gave me a, a great understanding of servers. And what I did was I hired some really great team members, specifically one of them over there, Chris Van Cooley. He, he rocks. He makes it all happen. Um, yeah, he's our sysadmin, just to put it into context. OK, I'm, I'm passionate. As you may have uh, kind of gathered, I really love WordPress. It's uh, what I do. Um, I've been into open source since uh, 2002, uh, somebody showed me a Linux server, and I fell in love, and then discovered WordPress, and it's also open source. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur at heart, so I don't know. It's just I sell myself constantly. It sounds like I'm a whore, but not really. Um, <laughs> yeah, so humble hosting beginnings. Uh, what does that mean? Well, we started with HostGator. I don't know if anyone's familiar with HostGator, but it's a hosting company in the US. And they have uh, hosting reseller packages. We started with just a basic shared package. And then I quickly realized that I needed a bit more. So I upgraded to the reseller package. Um, yeah, that, that kind of just allowed us to partition our hosting and be able to resell it easier and give people access to a cPanel and just tools for them to manage their mail and their hosting and things like that. So what I've learned is scale before you need it. Uh, if you're going to be doing hosting uh, and you're going to grow and grow and grow, and as the web is doing, it's growing constantly, you're going to have a need to actually have bigger, better, and more resources. So um, we decided to move to DreamHost. And I uh, do the sound. Uh, yeah, we decided to move to DreamHost. And DreamHost is an endorsed uh, WordCamp or oh, uh, WordPress hosting company. If you have a look on their hosting page, it's one of the companies that's listed there along with Bluehost. They had a system called VPS, Virtual Private uh, Servers. It's quite a nifty little service. Um, it allows you to scale your memory as you need it. So it's got this fancy little slider, and you just go, I want more memory. 2,000 megs, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so we tried that. We set up our systems. It wasn't really cutting it. And uh, we decided to look elsewhere before we needed it and before things started crashing. So we had a look at SliceHost, set up our systems there. 
then we also set up on Linode. Uh, we'd heard a lot of good things about Linode. In actual fact, Chris had, uh, was using it already. And we, we had essentially three lots of our, our sites running. And we, we set everything up. It took about six months to do testing and run through the whole process of trying to determine whether we like the host or not. And we ended up uh, sticking with Linode. Their service, their support, their reliability, everything. It was brilliant. It gave us exactly what we wanted. So what is Feed My Media exactly? It's three years' worth of research and development. Uh, it's our solution to our development requirements and our uh, hosting needs. So we, we obviously have our dev systems on there, and our developers are hooked up to that. Uh, we've tried to emulate WordPress.com as much as possible. As if you think about it, they're running 1,500 servers in three different uh, data centers. And they're running 100% Nginx. Their systems are incredible. Uh, I forget the exact stats now of what kind of uh, HTTP requests, but it, it's vast, it, un unbelievable. When I was doing my research, I just hats off to those guys. They really are breaking new ground. Um, as I said, our development systems are integrated. So our setup now is running 10 servers. We've got three load balancers, three web tier servers, a dedicated DB server, and a caching backup and database server. The two dev servers are kind of separate from that, and I'll explain why in a moment. So a bit of stats. Uh, this is what we're currently dealing with. Um, We've got 100K on 100K HTTP requests per week on Feed My Media, which is a multi-site install of WordPress running approximately 70 to 75 sites. Um, we're, we're quite proud of that. Works really well. One of our main clients is Media24. And uh, we host a lot of uh, magazine sites for them. So magazine sites, as you can imagine, are relatively high volume traffic. And they do 200K per week just on theirs. Uh, we do 500 queries per second uh, to MySQL, to our dedicated server and the slave. Um, number of sites hosted in all, 100 live sites. Uh, 670 dev sites. It's a bit out of proportion. reason why is because a lot of clients don't necessarily host with us or um, we set up theme test, test, testing grounds. Uh, very useful. Buy some new themes, check out some new codes, get some ideas, set it up, see the functions. It's very useful. Uh, monthly bandwidth usage, uh, one terabyte per month, uh, excluding internal traffic, and I'll show you now in this diagram. So if you have a look here, we've got three front-end uh, load balancers. Uh, on Linode.com, they're called node balancers. They're $20 uh, a machine. And then on a private network, isolated network, we've got our three front-end servers, web tier servers being our feedmymedia.com server, um, Media24 with a number of their sites, and we're taking over Sports Illustrated, so we're busy setting that up. It's a very high volume site, and it's going to need its own box, which is why it's uh, segmented there. Uh, the load balancers get the traffic in, and they route it to the primary box for where it needs to be. But uh, if that box is too busy, they will reroute that traffic to uh, the Media24 server if need be. And this is really great because it helps to prevent the boxes from falling over. Oh, sorry, I just wanted to say our DB servers, primary and secondary, are also on an isolated network. It means that they are secure from the web. Uh, dev versus live, what's the difference? Well. Our servers all pretty much run multi-site. We're big fans of WordPress multi-sites. For those of you who don't know what it is, uh, WordPress has an option that allows you to enable create or well, a network on it. So you can have 
technically unlimited sites on one WordPress install. WordPress.com, if I'm not correct, hosts 25 million sites, last time I checked, on one system. I think that they have 118 million tables in the database. Um, it's, it's massive. So we're not quite there yet. Uh, I think it's going to take a while longer. But multi-sites is definitely it's the way to go, in my opinion. Uh, if you have to maintain and update 20, 30, 40 different installs, you're going to spend your life updating, and it's just a nightmare. So what we've done is we've uh, set up these multi-site installations for both our dev environment and our live environment. And we use child themes only for our client's uh, sites. So uh, for those of you who don't know about child themes, they're very important. If you develop for WordPress, you must try and use child, unless you develop your own theme, and that's a different story. So Woo Themes, for example, we primarily use Canvas. Um, it's one of their, kind of their framework theme. Uh, it's a really flexible theme. It's black and white, so it initially we'll set up the black and white sys, uh, site, fill it with the content, set it up, and we'll skin it afterwards. But everything from the get-go is done with a child theme. Why? Because then a new version of Canvas comes out, and we can just update the parent theme, and the child theme stays intact. So, yeah, our dev servers, uh, what's the difference? Um, they're much lower resources. Obviously, they don't handle load. They're only really clients that would be hitting them. A lot of the times, they're password protected. So um, they don't need caching. A lot of the times, it's beta software that we're running. We haven't fully got it ready for production. Uh, we've got a client repo. What, it, that, what I mean by that is, We've set up in Subversion a specific folder just to handle our client child themes. And that's set up with an auto-deployment script. So the developers will simply check in their code into Subversion. And every five minutes, it will push um, or sync onto the dev server, making it easy for the guys to develop and deploy to the servers with limited um, effort. No FTP uploads, no insecurities like that. Um, we also have a plugins and themes repository. We're not big fans of plugins, much, much like Byron, but they are needed sometimes. Uh, it's always a, a choice. Do I put it in a plugin? Do I put it in a theme? I've got to agree with Byron. I really love functions.php. It's a great way to go. Um, we have recently been developing some interesting uh, plugins, so we decided to put some of that code into plugins. Um, the themes repo is, well, I buy up themes from all the different companies, and it just makes it easier for us to grab a snippet of code here and there and bring that in. And that's also sitting in a subversion. So we can easily push that. It doesn't auto deploy, but we can push it to wherever we like on the dev servers. Very handy. Now, about our live web tier servers. Um, there's way more redundancy in place. As you guys saw in the diagram, uh, there's, I mean, it's got failback from the main server to the secondary server. It's got the DB fallback to a secondary D DB server. Um, it's load balanced, which makes a big difference. Uh, higher resources by far. I mean, the, the, the servers are probably five times the size of the dev server in some instances, so um, definitely bigger. Uh, high availability is our goal, um, and that's obviously through load balancing and redundancy and that sort of thing. Dedicated DB, very important. Lots of caching, and I'm going to get to that in a bit. So under the hood, this is what we have. Uh, load balancer, HA proxy, great tool. Uh, web server, we run purely Nginx uh, with PHP, FPM. PHP opt-code cache, we use xcache. There are other options available. I'll get into that later. For HTML output, we use batcache with memcached object. Uh, database, we use Pocono MySQL. I'll also get to that later. HyperDB, memcached query cache, and then memcached. And for file synchronization, we use Unison. Interesting, we, we do this differently to WordPress.com. They use NFS, um, Network File System. It's 
Uh, not ideal in some situations, but they, they don't use it for everything. We've decided to go the route of Unison, and I'll get to that later. Okay, so this is a little diagram that I got off uh, Linode.com. They came out with this product um, a few months back. Chris will know exactly when that was. We were early beta testers. Um, Chris beta tests all the hardware as far as possible. Um, he's constantly testing, improving. And now it's stable, it's full release, and these systems have made a significant difference to our load time and our overall systems. So it's HA proxy powering that. Web server, um, Nginx, it's incredible. You want to use Nginx. Uh, Apache, it's a bit of a dinosaur now. It's definitely useful. It, uh, it's not a bad server, not dissing it or anything like that. But Nginx is rock solid, high performance, low resources. It's never crashed since we installed it. Never, ever. And I think that's impressive. OK, usage stats for Nginx. It's been growing in popularity massively. Uh, in August last month, in other words, uh, there were 3 million sites running Nginx. Um, and 52,000 in the top million. So you can see the percentages and stats here. It's really, it's grown significantly and it's only going to get, grow more. So an interesting little fact as I was doing my research, um, I'd kind of heard about this somewhere and then um, clicked a link to Wikipedia. There's a C10K problem. Does anyone know about the C10K problem? No, okay. Uh, most web servers can't handle more than 10,000 concurrent uh, connections. And uh, yeah, Nginx is one of the few. I think there were eight listed on Wikipedia that can actually handle that. Apache isn't one of those. So if you've got a high volume site, Nginx is definitely something you want to consider. So should we proxy to Apache? Or should we use PHP FPM straight with Nginx? Um, our take on it is use it straight up PHP to FPM. What I'm going to do after this uh, talk, probably only next week, is I'm going to be posting all of our research, all of our documentation, and all of our configs uh, on probably the WordCamp website. And I'm going to be sharing how we built our systems. It's quite complicated to explain this, so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna spare you the bore, boring detail. Okay, um, so I've been mentioning caching a whole lot. So benefits of caching is scalability, flexibility, availability, and performance. So web cache, primarily being the HTML cache, is. Uh, also ties in with your PHP opcode cache and memcached object cache with the primary thing here is bat cache. Okay, so a lot of people use WP super cache or they use W3 total cache. We use bat cache, which is what they use on WordPress.com. Uh, it's quite an interesting plugin. Um, it's, it's tricky to work it out. Uh, we've managed to get the config just right, which I'm, as I said, going to be publishing next week. So those of you who are interested in that can easily find out the details. So our database, this is a highly important part of the whole config. Queries on WordPress pages uh, to the database are vast. Every little PHP call hits the database, grabs information back. If you're not optimized and you don't have um, things in place to improve that, it's, uh, it's really going to affect your performance. So we, we use Pocona MySQL, as I said earlier. Um, it offers higher performance and more stability than the standard MySQL. Here are some usage stats. So you've got Pocona here. No dips, spikes, it's pretty solid, higher performance. These are transactions per minute, and that's standard MySQL. So Pocona, um, Chris, uh, who's the company that do Pocona? 
Pocono. Okay, sorry. Yeah, they are <laughs> blind. Uh, they have put a lot of effort into this, and I was reading up about sites that use it. Flickr's one of them. Stumble upon. It's very interesting. They're quite a. I think 37 Signals as well use it. Okay, so um, database uh, query cache. WordPress uh, requires a lot of DB queries, as I said. Um, utilizing the MySQL query cache can help reduce the extensive lookups. And this will also keep the most common uh, queries in cache and make it quicker to access. HyperDB is a plugin that they use on WordPress.com. Um, the guys at Automatic maintain this. Uh, it's a plugin for WordPress. If you do install it, it's not like a normal plugin. You need to read the installation files. Uh, you need to do configuration, and the idea is it's a drop-in replacement for the WPDB um, standard class, and it allows you to uh, partition your database if you need to. We don't partition our database. Um, in our case, we have a primary master that does reads and writes, and we have a secondary slave that handles reads alone. Um, it uh, allows for failover assist. If, for example, our primary DB goes down, which has happened, um, then it can fail over to the secondary DB. It makes a big difference. Uh, things don't die, because if you've split out your DB to another machine and it just dies, well, your page isn't going to load. If anyone's seen that error connecting to database on a WordPress site, that's why. Okay, so file synchronization, Unison. Um, it's not a lot to it. Uh, it allows two replicas of uh, files and directories to be stored on different hosts. It's two-way synchronization. If anyone knows what rsync is, it's one-way synchronization. So this is a great solution for the two-way synchronization. Um, Feed My Media is brought to you by the, from the, the Bat Cave. Why I say this is Chris is, our, is, is legend in our team. And we barely see him. He hardly ever comes in. He sits at home. He's connected with four machines. He's got three net, uh, internet connections. He's a genius. We really love Chris. And he, he works from the Bat Cave, and he's our Batman. So what's on the horizon for us? Um, well. I'm quite interested in this, uh, in moving to Git. We've got a lot of time invested in Subversion. Our entire development system runs off it. All our synchronization for like deployments, all of that runs from the Subversion repository. Uh, if you look at what WordPress.com are doing, they all use Subversion there. They've got a script called Servomatic that during my research I discovered we're going to be testing that soon. Uh, it allows pretty much the script that Chris wrote for syncing things. Not 100% what it can do, but it sounds very cool. Uh, as you see, it's uh, servomatic, double T, like automatic, Matt's name in there. Um, so Git, uh, they have a hosted Git solution on github.com. Git is a project uh, that was started by Linus Torvalds, if I'm not mistaken. He, yeah, they, they wanted to come up with a distributed uh, version control solution. One of the benefits that Donovan, one of my teammates, mentioned to me is that you're able to do local check-ins. So you don't necessarily commit everything to your repo live. You just do local commits, and then when you're ready, you can do a live commit. Sounds interesting. Quite keen to do it. Another thing that we're going to be trying, well, we've been trying it out for a while, but it's extremely difficult, is Varnish. Varnish is a caching system. Chris believes it can cut our load time by 50%. Holy grail. Uh, it's going to be interesting if we can get that right. Um, they're also struggling to get the config right on WordPress.com. Um, so I, I think it's a challenge all around. Puppet, uh, I've done a bit of reading on this. It's very interesting. First time I heard about it was when the Guy, uh, at Tech for Africa last year, one of the guys who worked at Twitter, um, he helped scale them to millions of hits a day. Um, he, he basically was raving about it. So it helps you with deployment, server configs. Uh, very interesting. 
Capistrano is also, from what I understand, for deployments. Um, guys at uh, WordPress.com are quite keen on this. Uh, this one presentation I saw by Mike, Mark Jaquith. Uh, he he was he wrote a whole he did a whole thing on it. And it uses Git. Well, they they were using Git in their their example. So I think that's one of the things we'd like to try. But again, we've got a lot of time invested in subversion. So to make the jump, all developers need to learn it. It's, it's something else. So Hudson was another thing I learned last year at Tech for Africa. Sounds interesting. Continuous integration. I'm not going to get into it, but it, it really, it's one of those things I want to try. And q and I'm going to hold because uh, Roy Fobister is going to come on next. Um, we've just got to swap over. He's going to be talking about using one server and getting the maximum out of that one server. He's a very uh, talented uh, system administrator and developer who he helps scale Keo. I'm sure you're all familiar with Keo. So he's going to be telling us all about well, how he does his thing, and then we're going to have a Q&A at the end. Thank you, everyone.